And how hard is it for you with story structure, because most thrillers jump back and forth, how do you create that structure and that suspense? That's a tough question. Uh, I think it's done through scene development. And what I mean by that is as your character is in a scene, you want to create tension and suspense within that scene. And it doesn't have to be extensive, but I think you really want to have tension in every scene. Even if it's just a conversation between, say, himself and his father, they might touch on something that, that bothered him a long time ago that they never resolved. That keeps the reader interested. Well, what's that about? You know. So, so really, if you looked at how a, a novel is structured, you've got a line on one side which is time, and you have a line on the other side which is suspense. And as the novel moves through time and suspense, it builds and then you reach the, the climax or the the apex of it and that should be your 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 big gusto scene where everything happens in that one scene and all the everything else is resolved does that make sense it does make sense so it, it, a, a novel a good thriller novel is structured very much like a hollywood movie is it's a, I, I tend to, to go with the three act you've got a beginning a middle and an end in the beginning we're kind of wondering what's going on not so much in a thriller as in a mystery, but in a thriller, we kind of know what's going on, but we're, we don't really have a sense of the, the entire picture. The middle of the book is really your main character figuring out what he has to do to defeat the bad guys, your hero. And then in the end, the last third of the book is really how does he implement that plan to defeat the bad guys. So it's very similar to a movie, actually, structurally. What is the hardest part of writing for you? What is the challenge that you face when you sit in front of your computer? Or is there one? Uh, for me, it, it, it's really manifested in distractions. I, if I'm distracted a lot while I'm trying to sit there and write, I, 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 I just I don't function well. So I need to find large blocks of time where I'm by myself and undisturbed. And it's really interesting you mention that because when I write, I, I listen to um, Sue Grafton at... at um, Santa Barbara in June and she said something that rang true for me she said she writes in what she considers her dark self this darker you know meaner self I guess if you want to call it that and it's oftentimes I'm up there and I, I do this myself I write from that tougher darker self because I want the writing to be edgy for a thriller it needs to be and Carla my wife will sometimes come up and ask me a question she says I'll growl at her and I have no <laughs> concept of doing this I just because I was so into what I was doing at the time and so um, difficulty writing really, I think maybe for most writers, is in distraction. We're solitary people. We, we spend a lot of time in our offices or in our cubicles alone. I mean, there's so many beautiful n days outside California, blue sky, beautiful days where I'm up in my office writing. You know, that's what it, you have to do. You have to get it done. So You can move to, like, Ohio, where I'm from, and it's just like... Horrible seven months out of the year. So <laughs> much easier. Ohio, you well, you know, I mean, you do have those winters there, whereas in California, we really. Good place for writers to live. Uh, <laughs> yes. Nothing else to do. Yeah, right in the winter time. Um, so. What is next for you? Uh, well, I'm working on my next book called A Darkness Within, and it is a story about how Nathan McBride is going to come face to face with his former interrogator from Nicaragua all those years ago. And it's really about, we're going to, it's still a thriller, but we're going to get much deeper into Nathan McBride's psyche about, you know, maybe he hasn't really recovered from what happened to him as much as he'd like to think he has. So um, it's a, it'll be a good story, very, very powerful. And um, we're going to learn a lot more about his true psyche in this next one. When can we expect to see that? Oh, that's a good question. And I just had lunch with my editor and agent uh, on Tuesday, and they're asking me the same thing. And um, I, I'm working on it. I, I'm about 100 pages into it. But I discovered something very interesting. When I was on the plane flight over here, I took out a pad of paper and a, and a pen, and I started writing manuscript this way. And I'd been struggling over the last few months to really get anything going, and I'll be darned if four hours later I didn't have nine pages of handwritten manuscript with 2,500 words on it. Wow. Yeah, it just, it just flowed. There's something about that hand-eye-pen thing 
Now, not all writers can do it. I know there's a few that write uh, manuscript by longhand, but I'm going to keep trying it because it seems to work for me. I write by longhand. You do? Outstanding. That's great. I do. I've got all my notebooks. So That's great. And then I type. Which yeah. And, and as you do that, as you translate from your longhand to the, to the computer, you actually make changes and edits as you go. So, yeah. So I think I'm going to take a pad and pencil down to the beach and see what happens. And then you get to sit outside while you write. I do, yeah. Now we'll Harder to do in Ohio in the winter. <laughs> yeah. We don't sit outside really. I mean, we've no. got three months and. <laughs> yes, but. Uh, <laughs> and usually is it only raining. three months, really? Yeah, three months. Wow. And it, it rains half of the time. <laughs> <coughs> and I'm making it sound horrible and I apologize. Um, it's all right. But thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And you can check Andy out on Writing Room. His screen name's Andy Peterson. Send him a message. Go buy his book. Tell him how great it is. Um, thanks. Yes, thank you.